Melissa? Uh, yes, along with that, the Lord had also been speaking to me about how he is during this time restoring the identity yeah. and authority of the church. You know, with the COVID season of, you know, some would call it like a season of silence to a certain extent <laughs> for the church in some regions of the world, um, some some that are still, that are just now emerging from it, some other regions like our the nation of Canada that's still very much under it. But the spirit of the Lord during this time has steered his church toward taking a good hard look at herself in the mirror of his word, causing us to realize that there really is so much more <laughs> available for us through Christ. Mm -hmm. Looking at the ministry of Jesus, the book of Acts church, the sea-splitting uh, sea wilderness miracles of the Old Testament and on and on. The Lord is reawakening his church to who we are in him and the permissions that we have been given, the authority that we possess, provoking within us a dissatisfaction, a deep spiritual hunger mm -hmm. and a focused pursuit suit of his kingdom toward the miraculous and toward transformation, restoring all of that within the church and not just within the four walls of the church. Like he clearly was showing me that this is to affect change in society and not, yeah. not just through politics and policy, although of course partnership with that arena is essential, but through proclamations of truth, through intercessory prayer, through prophetic decrees that shift off atmospheres and even will overturn death decrees. The voice of the church is, has been seemingly silenced for a season, but it is now coming back as, as strong and pure and authoritative, a voice that, that's a voice of an emboldened people who yeah. see themselves as mighty overcomers. And he drew me to Psalm 29, where it speaks of the voice of the Lord. And it says, the voice of the Lord is over the waters. The, the glory of God thunders. The voice of the Lord thunders over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars in pieces. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning and it shakes the desert and it twists oaks bare and strips forests bare. And it says, and all in his temple cry glory. Mm -hmm. And I saw this as sound waves that were dripping like golden dew, uh, golden dew of glory as the church, as the bride was opening her mouth and releasing the voice of the Lord, the sound of the Lord, bringing splendor and beauty and fruitfulness into dry and dark and barren places. And the voice of the Lord is going to thunder through his church, shaking foundations of systems and structures, both within the church and throughout society, as the church arises and says, this is the way it must be. This is the mm -hmm. way it must be. And, and even the church herself canceling out words that she had spoken in previous seasons of, I shouldn't, or I don't have permission to do so, or and replacing those words with, I must, I will, because this is who I am. This is essential to what I'm here to do. So mm -hmm. I I will, I must, I will heal the sick. I will raise the dead. I will cast out demons. I will prophesy. And the Lord said, I'm infusing the church with my thunderous voice, but my voice must thunder first within you. And I asked the Lord what he meant by this. And he said, my church, my voices on the earth must be clean trumpets, no interference. And that's the, the, the cleansing and the deliverance that even Anthony spoke of. And I could see a shofar and I could see the hand of the Lord, like, you know, the ram's horn and how they would prepare a shofar was they would carve it out. They would dip it in boiling hot water to soften the insides and carve it out and dip it in boiling hot water again and carve out some more as those as new areas were becoming softened and over and over again until it was a completely clean trumpet and clean vessel so that a clear, sharp sound could come through, could flow through, and could be heard for others to respond to that sound. And the Lord was, was asking, who is willing to embrace the process of purification and of prep preparation so that my voice can thunder through you, through my church, in the earth, in this time? Mm. So the Lord is issuing a fresh call to the ancient way. He's, he's calling for forth uh, um, the narrow road sojourners, the narrow <laughs> road sojourners, those people who are willing to walk the unpopular path of, of consecration and holiness so that he can rightly prepare us to release yeah. the pure sounds of the Lord that will cause things to come into alignment, that will welcome his glory to drench a deluge of his glory into those dark places. So I wow. just want to encourage anyone that may be experiencing some dissatisfaction 
within your heart, maybe with the church, you know, with the, with, with the way that your own Christian life, what it's looked like. And I, I want to encourage you to attend to your hunger, to activate your pursuit of God in, in, in a more profound way. He wants to give you fresh insight and encouragement and empowerment to be who you are called to be. Yeah. Come on, the full manifestation of sons and daughters to do what he designed you to do. Great exploits for his kingdom where we see the miraculous and we see transformation. Well, you know, mm. when you're giving this illustration of the shofar, I'm listening and then I'm thinking back over my life and, and really the Holy Spirit is saying through all three of you kind of different analogies, but, you know, talking about being clean, you know, cleaning the floor and uh, the dipping of the shofar and the digging. I, whenever I hear words digging and the Holy Spirit saying that I'm going, oh, we're in for a season. <laughs> you know, that refiner's fire is hitting again. Restoration. Yeah, restoration. Emma, you want to jump in there and tag on to that? I mean, you're almost prophesying exactly as I've heard the Lord say. I love it when, when God gives the prophets similar things because you just feel the collective weight on that. I heard the Lord <laughs> say this, the capability is coming back to yeah. the people of God to be the church. The mm -hmm. capability is coming back for the removing of the capping is happening. And I felt like the church had got capped by its own complaining, by past pain, <laughs> by even a self-sabotage spirit that the church had. And the Lord says, you're going to see what has capped you. You're going to know what has capped you. But this is the season of deliverance from what has capped you so that you may become fully capable in this season. Now, also on the purification thing, I mean, M Melissa, I'm high-fiving you from Scotland <laughs> because I heard the Lord say, you're going to enter the days of a purification that is not just what you've known before of just a little bit of fire, but a purification that radically transforms. And the Lord says you're going to come into the days of a resetting of your boundaries and a resetting of what is not permissible. And boundaries are going to come to what you say, what you think, and what you action. And you can feel this holiness and this inner desire for holiness rising again that will have a fresh outward demonstration. It's a resetting burning. And the Lord is saying, take holiness seriously again. And there is contention over your purity. Mm -hmm. So amazing. We're, we're, in, we're in amazing, we're in opposed days, but we're in amazing days where truly we will be the shining light that God wants us to be. And it's even happening with my own teenagers, you know, where people in school are coming. I mean, seriously, I've got little, little boys. And do you know, <laughs> can I tell you a story if we've got time? You know, a 14 year old, my 14 year old, he's an average 14 year old, you know, he's got all the, it's fine. How was your day? fine fine you know what teenagers are like <laughs> and his friends his friends are on the text you know jesus i'm self-harming can you come and help and this 14 year old boy is being infused with the power of god is going to his friends houses is removing all the implements that his friend would use to self-harm this atheist family and my little 14 year old's turning up he's never done anything like that before but he just knew that it was the day to be the church and he knew he needed to turn up and be a solution <laughs> I love that. And that's our generation we're looking for and excited about.